leadership capital is the currency <laughs> of winning. Yes. This is the Jocko Debrief Podcast with Dave Burke and me, Jocko Willink. So, Dave, here we are. I want to talk a little bit about how we got here and why we decided to do this. What we do at Echelon Front is work with companies. We talk to them about leadership. We try and pass on the lessons that we learned about leadership. We try and help them along the pathway and help their organization align all of their leadership. We do the same thing with EF Online, which is our online platform. And we spend basically all day, every day, talking about leadership with all these different individuals and all these different scenarios. And we, when these things happen, you know, there's issues that get resolved. There's issues that get, that don't get resolved and take another move and another step. And we spent a lot of time debriefing these things. And I, I was thinking, and we were thinking that it would be, I, we got done talking about one of these things. And I said, it would be nice if we had recorded that debrief and let everybody know that there's a solution to that particular problem. A lot of good topics, a lot of universal lessons. And we thought it might be cool to put together a podcast about that. So here we go. We're going to try and keep it a little bit shorter than the normal Jocko podcast, not talk for five hours. So that way people can digest them, get the lessons and, and move on. Try and keep a maybe like a half an hour, something like that. Cover a couple topics. So with that, Dave, let's debrief. What do you got? Yeah. The cool part about talking about leadership all day, every day is like, I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. And the conversations we're having are these real time problems that these companies are struggling with. And when we come up with a solution, it makes a huge impact. And I think the connection I was making when we were talking to it is how useful that can be. You don't have to be at this company for the lesson and the takeaway to be useful for you. So I think this stuff is pretty universal. The first company, this first conversation we were having, mm -hmm. it came up recently. And the thing that's crazy about it, I probably had four different companies that I've been working with just in the last couple weeks, all dealing with the exact same thing. COVID hits, it's early March, the whole thing, everything kind of shuts down. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things we were talking about, you talked about this on, on one of our very first EF Online sessions is you gotta tell your people the truth. And this is an emotional time. You got to say detached from the emotion, but you have to tell your people the truth. And one of the things I think a few people did was in their, their concern about making their people worried is they said, hey, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine. We're not letting anybody off. We're not going to make any big movements. And so in the, the interest of keeping people calm, they said something that in in, in the short term, actually, kept them pretty calm. Hey, you had nothing to worry about. But let me ask you this. Was what they were saying the truth? So, no. It wasn't the truth. <laughs> I was going to say, because there's a, you can, you can pre-identify the issue that you're going to have when the out of the gate, what you're saying is n not the truth. Yeah. And here's what you got to watch out for is you might think that you understand. You might think you understand, and you kind of bolster your opinion up because you know it's the easy way. It's the easy way to roll. So I look and go, hey, you know what? This virus is hitting. It's going to last a month. You know what? We can. We got enough funds. We'll be fine. We're not laying anyone off. That's the truth as you see it. Mm -hmm. The part that you're missing is you don't know. That's the part that you're missing. And, and if you remember early on when we were talking in Echelon Front, I said, hey, this is a virus. It's going to run its course. It just like when you get sick as a human being with a virus, look, when you get a bacterial infection, guess what? You go and you take antibiotics and it cleans you up. That's just what you do. With a virus, there's no, there's no antibiotics. It runs its course and then it's, you spend three days in bed and then when it's over, it's over. You lose you know, five, eight pounds of whatever because you can't eat or you're sick or you're throwing up and then you get done and it's over. And, and then you go back to normal life. And I, and I just thought to myself, okay, this is a virus that's gonna run its course. It, and you just extrapolate that out to the nation and you say, okay, well, the virus, that's what I did. Okay, the virus is gonna run its course. And, and, and actually, when you, look at, when you look at the world, 
many places that's exactly what it looks like. There's a massive spike, the virus runs its course, and then it's kind of gone. Uh, the you know, if you look at Italy right now, massive spike, people dying, it's awful, and then it's over. It runs its course. So that was that was my opinion of what was going to happen. But if you remember, when we talked about what we were going to do at Echelon Front, I said we could breath hold through this thing. Meaning, hey, we could just be like, okay, batten down the hatches, let this thing get, go through, and we'll be back on the road in two months, and we'll be back to normal business. But there was enough of an there's enough of an ego control mechanism in place that I was said to myself, hey, I think that's what's gonna happen, but I don't know that that's what's gonna happen. So I didn't convince myself that that was the truth. I said, hey, this is what I think will happen, but we're not gonna do a breath hold. We're gonna make proactive changes right now, make adjustments because I don't know how long this thing's gonna last. I'll tell you how long I think it's gonna last, but I don't know that. So therefore, we are going to make adjustments right now to be ready, if this thing work, if this thing is over in two months, great. We'll, we'll, we'll carry on. If it's not over, if it lasts for three months or five months or six months or a year, we're making adjustments right now to be able to contend with that sort of a future. So out of the gate, when you start thinking about these things as a leader, you, you not only have to tell the truth, you have to make sure that you are telling the truth to yourself about what you know and what you don't know. So to come out of the gate when something like this hits and say, we're gonna be fine, you know, everything's good, we don't have to make any adjustments, I'm not laying anyone off, we're not cutting, that's not being truthful to yourself about what you know and what you don't know. Yeah, and that right there is the difference. When you, none of these companies, none of these folks we've been working with, sat down and said, this is gonna be really bad, but I can't tell my people that, so I'm gonna lie to them. That, that's not what this was. It was exactly how you described, which was, hey, I don't really know, but the I think the best thing I can do is keep everybody calm, because we're gonna get through this. That's the breath hold. Hey, everybody, we're gonna be fine. And the not telling your truth to the, yourself, so you don't tell the truth to your people, what it does is it defers the problem and now they're in a position where not only are they grappling with, with what to do now, because now they're having to make some harder decisions, they're also in a position to have to sort of explain and defend why they said what they said four or five months ago instead of being truthful, which is, listen, I don't know what's gonna happen. I do not know what's gonna happen. Here are some things that I think may play out. Here's some experience that tells me we might move in this direction, but the way we're gonna operate at this company is we're gonna be agile, we're gonna be flexible, we're gonna change, to make sure we succeed and thrive and get through this. And that may mean some hard decisions along the way that when they come, we'll address them. And I don't know how that's gonna play out, but what we're gonna do is everything that we can to make sure we get through this. That is a very different conversation than you have nothing to worry about, everything is fine, don't worry about how this plays out because in a couple months, we're gonna be back to ops normal. So th that goes into you, you tell your people the truth and you make a mistake. So then what do you do? Clearly, we know what to do. The book is called Extreme Ownership. When you when you come up and say, hey, everyone, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. It's going to be gone in a couple months. No factor. And then a couple months goes by and it's still there and you don't have any income and all of a sudden we got to start letting people go. What you do is you tell the people the truth about what's happening. And you say, here's what is happening. And then the most important thing you've got to do once you once you say, hey, this is the adjustment that I've got to make, you've got to say, and here's why I need to make this adjustment. I was wrong. I thought this thing would be over in two months. I was wrong. Here's the adjustment we're making. The reason that we have to, what's the situation? The reason we have to reduce salary right now is because if we don't re reduce salary, we are going to run out of money. And if we run out of money, we won't have a business anymore. So we are going to cut salaries right now. And you know what? I don't know when it's coming back. Here are some other measures that we are going to take. We are going to adjust our business in this direction. We are going to do, adjust our business in another direction. At Echelon Front, for instance, what business did we, did we adjust? We started doing all online training. We went from 99.9% face-to-face to 99.9% -face -face to virtual. At Origin, what do we do at Origin? We went from making geese and jeans. By the way, geese, that's a great business to be in. When there's thousands of jujitsu schools 
expanding across the country. And then in about a one week period, every single jujitsu school and academy in America was shut down. Who's buying geese when you can't do jujitsu? So what do we do? Pivot. We started making other products, products that were needed. We started making masks. We, we ramped up some of our other production. But you, you can't just sit there and say, well, you know what? We'll just sit around and wait until, until people need geese again. Yeah. When, when is that going to be? I mean, well, to, to be quite frank, actually, people are starting to order geese again now. And we're, we ramped up production again. But we didn't know how long it was going to be. So you have to explain not just not just what you're doing, not just about the mistakes you made, not just about your error in judgment, but also why you're why you're doing this. You know, I had a, I was working with a client the other day. It's almost the exact same problem, and he was. We were role playing how he was going to tell his team, "Hey, you know, we're going to have to get rid of some people." It wasn't just cut and pay anymore. It was like, we're going to have to get rid of some people, and and what he was saying was, "This is a business decision." Which, which is on the extreme version of I'm not having any emotions, right? Hey, well, this is a business decision. I mean, if you tell, if Dave tells me, he's my boss, says, yep, I'm cutting three people, it's a business decision, sorry. That means to me, Dave doesn't care about me. He just cares about the business. If you tell me that we're doing this because if we don't cut people right now, we will have to shut everything down and no one's gonna have a job. And by the way, my goal is, we bring, once business starts going again and we make these adjustments and we pivot and we move, we'll be able to bring some pe- other people back on board. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're trying to do. So telling people the truth, telling them why you're doing what they're doing and admitting that you're making mistakes, very important things to go through in situations like this. Yeah, we were talking about, just today on EF Online, we're talking about leadership capital. And the best way to lose leadership capital lose trust, lose respect, is to show your team that you don't care about them. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the why, one of the things you're trying to explain inside that why is how do we get through this? How do we get healthy? And why those sacrifices are important. And it is not easy to let someone go. It's not easy to do that. But if you have enough leadership capital and you care about your people enough when you explain why we're doing what we're doing and how these things, these steps along the way might give us a chance to to actually increase investment over here. And I might shift you from this job to that job, or I might not be able to bring you back here, but when this happens and this happens, I I now have an opportunity to bring you back. Those people, what, what we're seeing is that people are getting their hours cut, people are getting their salaries cut. They're still trying to contribute as much as they can and work above and beyond what's expected of them because they believe in what's happening and they want to be part of the recovery of that team and help maybe the ones that aren't going to be there or even just make that company survive. So even in these hard business decisions, the thing that matters the most is your people believing in what they're doing for you. And what we're seeing is these companies that are working through this, their people are stepping up and contributing. When on paper, they really shouldn't, but they're doing it because... Their leaders, they're saying and doing the things that make them know that I care about you and I want you to be successful and this is how we make it happen. And yeah. if we don't and we all fail, we all lose. Yeah, the the losing leadership capital by not taking care of your people, the biggest indicator and self-check to ensure that you're not allowing that to happen is make sure that you're putting your team above you. <laughs> put, 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 put the team above yourself. And that is one of those things you think you can get away with. You think no one's going to notice that you kind of, you took care of yourself. You took the easy job. You took, you didn't take the pay cut, whatever the case may be. You think no one's going to notice that. They all notice it. Yes. And this is coming from years of experience of my own, of watching my leaders and seeing them take care of themselves sometimes. And, and hearing the whole, not just me. It's not just like I noticed it because I was super perceptive. No, I'm talking about everyone in the platoon. Did you see that piece of crap over there sitting with his hands in his pockets while we're working? It's everybody notices that. And one of the things I said on EF online today that somebody pulled out a little quote and put it in the chat box was, you know, if you're if your team is going to suffer, you better partake in that suffering as a leader. And you better partake more as more than everybody else. More than everybody else. Otherwise, you're burning your leadership capital for no reason. And this is a, this is the situation. These are the times when that leadership capital matters the most. You had another cool line today in your phone line. 
leadership capital is the currency <laughs> of winning. Yes. Listen, we were all running on a pretty hot streak. The country, the world was running on a hot streak. We were all benefiting from this rising tide that all of us were growing, expanding, making money, and things were really good for most of us for a pretty long time. Well, it's not like that right now. And where it really matters, where you really show that you believe in the things that you say, that the ethos that your people come first, all those things that we can say when it's easy to say, when things are, are easy, this is where that leadership capital matters the most. And this is when winning is the most difficult, when that currency is the most viable. This is the time to have that currency. It's a legit quote. Yeah, I, I, I thought you might like that one. <laughs> so that's good. Good ways to deal with these situations yep. and preventing the rumor and the chaos and the mayhem. And how do you do that? Tell the truth. Explain why. And make sure that you lead from the front when it comes to suffering. Partake in the suffering. That's good. <laughs> what was the next one? I don't want to give you my advice anymore. You don't listen to me. And even if I offer you something and it doesn't work, you still blame me for the problem. So this.